Hello. So, sorry I wasn't on yesterday. Yesterday I had um, some, I was recovering some from some bad news. My husband had a death in the family, so we were all still sort of reeling from that. So, that's what happened there. So I am back again today, and I wanted to talk about something that seems to be that seems to be coming up in a lot of um, YouTube videos. A lot of people, if you're watching anything that's like uh, political or even philosophical, those kinds of things, that is coming up, and that's tribalism. So. I always believed that God created us to be in groups. Like, even if it's just groups who all like the color blue, then we can all get together and agree to like the color blue. And what do we like blue on? And what shade of blue do we like? And how much do we like blue? And we can be the blue brigade or whatever. Uh, I don't think it's wrong to group up. What I think is wrong to do is to group up and then make a different group that say likes chartreuse or something weird like that is then evil incarnate and that all these people are wrong that is what i think is wrong so i'm going to go over kind of some things today that for me shows group dynamics are good it's not bad to be part of a group it just depends on what is that group doing what are these actions creating? So I do have some notes, so I will be reading some so that I can stay focused and sort of get all of my uh, thoughts organized. So although God can use many things, animals, trees, cars, etc., to manifest his will, he often does so through people. And he does that while we're grouped together while we're part of a church or the body of God. He has specific outlines for the church or the body of Christ or God, which is the church, who he also calls the body on how to work together and how to be organized. So we have outlines, we have all of these things that show, you know, what are you supposed to be doing so that we know when we're doing it wrong, when we're doing it right, and what's working and what's not. We already have this outline. And he also gives us why we should do it, right? So Hebrews 10, 24 through 25, says basically, let's meet together and not stop meeting to encourage one another towards love and good works. And the Bible outlines good works very clearly. Good works is treating your neighbor as yourself. Good works is helping the poor. Good works is going out and not being greedy, you know, loving people especially when they are hard to love okay about our enemies he says to pray for them and treat them well and if someone asks for your jacket you give them your shirt your over shirt you know so this um, layout of actions shows how we're supposed to love people so i have a story about how he uses the body of christ to encourage each other and my this is like my most this is the one I like the most just because it's so cool for me I was working at, in the youth at the time I didn't have gas in my car enough to go get my husband at work and then also go home like I could get to get to his job but that's where we would spend the night <laughs> now I gotta change something on this phone right here I thought I did it but I didn't do it okay there we go so Sorry, back to it. So I was sitting in my car and I was telling God, God, I'm doing what you told me to do. I'm interacting with the youth. I'm doing, you know, I'm getting involved where you told me. And so now I need your help. I need gas money because I can get to the gas station, but I don't have any money. And so I waited maybe 10 minutes just sitting there telling them, God, you know, I know you've got me. I'm just going to sit here until you tell me to do something or until something happens. And what ends up happening is a lady at church walks up to me in my car knocks on the window and, and hands me twenty dollars and says here you go god told me you needed this and i was like thank you very much you have no idea yes i definitely need this i didn't, I didn't have any gas thank you very much and i had not told anyone i didn't have gas 
I wasn't sitting in my car crying or anything. There was no indication that, that I was in need. The only person who knew I was in need was God. And so he sent this lady out with this money and I had gas. And so that is one of the more common, just, I've heard stories like this in church all the time where you're having a problem and God sends someone. My brother will tell me all the time that when God sends him, it's to send him to help someone. And so that is what God wants us to do. He wants us to go out and make each other's lives better, not worse, not laden with guilt or not, not laden with a hardship. He wants us to make our lives better. My other story is not mine, but it was told to me actually Monday, yesterday, while I was babysitting. And that is the gentleman and he has a brother and this brother was not saved. Oh no, I think I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> and what he does is he prays for his brother, prays for him to come to the knowledge of God, prays for him to understand, you know, what salvation truly is and to give him the words and to be in the right place for when this happens. What ends up happening is he drives for Uber. So he was in the area of his mother's home. He had, he was done with his job and he went to go visit his mother. On that same day, his brother was on the way. He gets there first. He's knocking, ringing the doorbell. His mom's not answering, which apparently is odd for her. And then the brother comes up to the house to stand with this gentleman. At this point, the gentleman is told by God, now is the time to talk to your brother. And so when the brother asks, hey, how you doing? The gentleman begins to tell him how great everything is, you know, how God has blessed him, how good everything is, and how God has a message for him, etc. His brother breaks down and accepts God right there on the porch. At this point, his mother comes out because she's wondering where they are. They're supposed to be there by now. And then she thinks she hears voices on the porch and she comes out. She was not, she didn't hear the knocking. She didn't hear the doorbell. She didn't hear any of that. So here we are again with this gentleman and his brother, and they are brought together by God. And it ended up in salvation, which again, I think is awesome, right? Why not? Like that, like that's so cool. So there's another way God uses people. I was listening to a podcast Jordan Peterson was on. And he was talking about, he was making some comments on tribalism and how tribalism isn't bad, that tribalism depends on what you're doing with it, right? How if you are part of a tribe and that tribe is out raping and pillaging, of course, then that's bad. But if your tribe is out building cities and creating, you know, freedom and everything else, then of course that is good. And that we are created to be part of a group, a tribe, not only for ourselves because of loneliness and things like that, but so that we can make the tribe better so that we can encourage each other so that we can challenge each other things of that nature and that's exactly what the bible says the bible says you get together and you are to encourage each other towards love and right action you are to encourage each other when someone has something happen to them we are to surround them love them if it's chastisement then chastise them if, if something's happened where they need correction to correct them in a loving manner, but we are all there to support and encourage and grow each other. And sometimes that means to challenge each other. I think I grow the most when someone does challenge me and that's what we are supposed to do. So this is what I'm talking about as far as tribalism. Second Timothy 3.16 says all scripture is inspired by God. It's good for reproof, which means to get on to you. You know, what are you doing? Don't do that. Correction, which means this is what you're supposed to do. And good instruction to tell you what you do before you mess up. <laughs> and so here we have, this is 
together we do this with the Bible, with the directions of God. Romans 15, 30 tells us to pray together for each other. Well, it says, it's actually, I think John or somebody asking for prayer as they pray for each other, pray for him. Okay. And prayer brings on a bond because we begin to understand each other's struggles, which then creates a understanding of that person, which should then create a bond of love and understanding and a desire to help. That's how that should work. So if we're praying for each other, we understand each other's needs and each other's um, faux pas and the things that we struggle with, etc., so that we can help each other get out of it. Not only through prayer, but through just common sense, everyday ways that that happens. Philippians 1.27 says, Stand together and in standing, create a reputation. Okay? When we, as Christians, follow God and we do not waver and we do not give in to what the, the, the world says that you can do with your religion, when we do that, we have now a reputation of being followers of God. We become separate like we're supposed to. We're not supposed to be of the world. We live in it, but we're not of it. And this creates a reputation. When I was working, because God says, don't lie, don't steal. I didn't lie, I didn't steal. When something happened, they automatically knew it wasn't me. I, I heard them say it. When I was working, in many places, they're like, well, this is screwed up. And then they would stand there and go, well, we know it's not Andrea because this, that, and the other. All right. Your reputation matters. What you're doing matters it, in everything, whether in, in your work, in your joking, everything. So this is how God created us and how we work best. To be part of the tribe of Israel, grafted in and adopted to good works and love. That is how he created us. Let's say you don't believe in any of this Jesus stuff. It is still good, because that's how God made us, to be in a group of people who are out there doing good work. Who are out there trying to help other people. Who are out there trying to make a difference in the world. Who are out there trying to understand life, ourselves, things like that, you will be better for it. When, when you go through these hardships, you will have these people to lean against, even if it's just to say, oh yeah, man, my car crapped out. Dang it. You know, <laughs> then perhaps even these people may even help you. I don't know. I haven't been part of a secular group in a while, but what I've seen, even in just my comic book shop, where these guys are with each other all the time. They're at all these conventions together. I have seen people help each other during hard times, put charity charity work together for people who are having a hard time. I have seen all of that in just a comic book shop. Imagine Christians, the level of charity, the level of work, the level of good. Excuse me that God sees, that God has created by making us his church and making us the body of Christ, by making us the tribe of Jesus. And that is all I want to say today. So thank you for joining me. And if you're on Twitter, be sure to give me a follow and at me with any comments, questions, or criticisms, and I'll be happy to talk to you. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you. And I hope you come back. And again, you can leave a comment, criticism, question, anything, critique in the comment section, and I usually respond to that within a day. So until tomorrow, guys, I will see you then. Remember to read your Bible and pray. And until tomorrow, bye.